live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Hi everybody, we're back. Welcome back to Barcelona. We just heard the keynotes, uh, Meg Whitman, uh, Antonio Neri, Bill Vecti, and some other folks. Uh, we're back live with theCUBE. We're here uh, today, tomorrow, and Thursday. Going wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Sarwar Raza is here. He is uh, with HP's networking group. He's a, a cloud, SDN, open source expert. Sarwar, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So open networking is a top, it's all, for decades it's, been, decades it's been an oxymoron. And finally, we're, we're seeing this rush mm -hmm. of open source and open innovation. What's happening? Why open, why now? Well, so I think if you, if you go back a couple of years, uh, you know, the uh, sort of the, the SDN movement really catalyzed, you know, what I like to call the, the, democrat, uh, the uh, democratization of networking, right? So we're looking at moving away from a single vendor chokehold and vertically locked in solutions to, uh, to solutions that offer uh, interoperability across uh, across the architecture. And SDN was one of the catalysts for it, but now we're seeing you know, uh, projects all across uh, the networking domain, whether it's hardware, uh, you know, operating systems, uh, you know, cloud operating systems like OpenStack, uh, SDN controllers like Open Daylight. Uh, really, this thirst for open from, uh, from customers, and that's really who it's being driven by, right? It's a customer drive for open interoperable solutions that is uh, uh, pushing vendors in that direction. I mean, obviously there's been a lot of events going on in the, in the networking business, but several in the last, you know, I don't know, half a decade. Obviously HP's acquisition of 3Com mm -hmm. was a big deal. VMware's acquisition of you know, Nicera mm -hmm. sort of opened up, up some eyes, and as you say, this whole open source movement. I, I would even say, I would even look at movements like Hadoop mm -hmm. as you know, part of that, that catalyst, and they sort of coincided with all these other you know, open innovations that you talked about. So, having said all that, open is in the eyes of the beholder, right? right? I mean, it used to be <laughs> Unix was open. Right. Back in the day. So how do you look at open? How does HP define open? What is open to you? Well, so there's, there's really three components to openness, right? There's, uh, there's open ecosystem, there's open standards, and then there's open source. Uh, when, you, when you look at ecosystems, uh, I think without exception, you can look around and everyone's got you know, their, their NASCAR slide, right? A slide full of logos of, of partners. Uh, and you know everyone is claiming you know some level of interoperability with with everyone else. Uh, I think the the value uh, that an open ecosystem brings is really you know to be, to be able to bring your partners along, uh, you know in, in your success and also offer customers uh, best of breed choices. Open standards is an area where you know bodies like IETF, IEEE, ONF. I mean they've been doing work for a good work for many many years. In fact. Many of the fundamental innovations that led to the internet, uh, you know, came out of those bodies. Um, open source has been around for decades, but has really changed from you know what used to be a bunch of hobbyists and you know people who are really passionate about putting out solutions, uh, free solutions, into really uh, a a way of doing business. So most open source projects now have major corporate backers, right? Uh, which is which is not in of in of itself a bad thing, right? What's actually happening is open source is becoming more and more mainstream because, like I said, customers are demanding that openness in their solutions, and vendors are realizing that the benefits of interoperability and the leverage that open source gives them. I mean, here we are, you know, the the collective brain 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 trust of you know Linux kernel developers from you know Red Hat and HP and IBM collaborating and the same goes for OpenStack where you have you know the brains at HP working with you know the, our various partners and, and even some of our competitors um, the same's coming to networking now so the effect of that is is what accelerated development um, 
better collaboration amongst competitors, which actually <laughs> leads to customer value. Can we, what can we learn from the, from the Linux example? That's a good one, right? You said yeah. Red Hat, IBM, HP. Yeah. You know, you remember the days of, oh, Linux versus Unix. Oh, yeah. Linux is nowhere near. And yeah. all of a sudden, boom. Well, know, so almost overnight. So, so go ahead. So I think I think the I think the, the lesson to be learned there is, you know, um, open source. Open source by itself is, is fantastic, uh, and you know we have a lot of very, uh, very mature communities out there that are putting out absolutely fantastic product, uh, you know, of fantastic code that can be turned into product. Uh, but you know, Linux Linux took some curation, and it needed maturity, right? And several vendors stepped up to help it along. So HP was the first major vendor that actually indemnified its customers from all the FUD around Linux back in the day. And that was a huge step in its adoption by the enterprise. Yeah, because it de-risked it for the, the customer. Absolutely. Well, okay, we'll take on that risk. Yeah, and you know, you, uh, uh, you, you take a look at you know, billion dollar businesses that have been built around Linux distributions. And so, open source, you know, we get this question a lot. People say, hey, you're dabbling in open source, you know, in, at the SDN controller side, on the, 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 the OpenStack Neutron side. What's in it for you, right? Just giving away product. And, uh, you know, I always tell people, you know, there, there is a lot of value to be built around open source solutions. The value of open source, like I said, is, is the leverage, the interoperability, the common core, right? And being able to leverage, you know, that brain trust and to be able to build partnerships in the community. Uh, but at the end of the day, you will see differentiated solutions built on top of open source cores. That's what uh, you know, HP Helion OpenStack is about. That's what uh, you know, our, uh, our cloud networking solution is around as well. Yeah, I was going to say, you're clearly seeing that in, in, in OpenStack. Um, now, so how should we look at something like OpenStack? Because you've got this open standard, mm -hmm. but you've got different distros, yeah. right? And there's people question the interoperability, but they're closer. How do you see that playing out over time? Is this going to be a world where we see stovepipes of clouds um, that maybe work a little bit better together? There's some level of interoperability, or do you envision, particularly with OpenStack, that there's going to be a lot more interoperability than historically? Well, so I think I think the what OpenStack has going for it really is that interoperability story, right? The ability for providers to take, you know, maybe slightly different versions of an OpenStack cloud, but as long as, you know, you have the, 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 the right versions of the APIs, right, those, 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 those contracts uh, between those clouds, uh, those technical contracts, you should be able to burst from one to the other. And that's especially true when you're going from a private environment to a public environment, where, you know, if we're able to enable our customers to say, yes, you can go from, you know, HP private cloud to, you know, an HP Helion cloud instance, but Mr. Customer, because of our inter interoperability and openness promise, you can also uh, burst to a competitor cloud, right? That uses the same uh, the, the same standard APIs, right? That's the kind of choice that that customers are they value, but you know they may never get to use it, but they they value that, and when they're making their purchasing decisions, yeah, it helps them sleep at night. But at the same time, you you hear things like, well. Vendor A is not going to certify, you know, maybe not exactly what you just described, no. but but we're not going to certify this this R product mm -hmm. in this configuration, and so so the opera the interoperability is not as um, complete mm -hmm. as the vision yeah. would would have you believe. Will that change over time, in your opinion? Uh, I I hope so, right? So I think uh, uh, you know there there's, there are always competitive forces at play, right? And there will be uh, even you know, even in open source, open source, there will be competing distributions of the same product. So you know how that plays out over time, I think remains to be seen. I mean, you, you go through sort of uh, you know uh, in, in in any in any sort of uh, transformation like this, you will see you know a large number of folks standing up solutions, and then eventually you'll see some consolidation among you know the smaller players, and you know the the, the strongest will survive. Let's talk about more about HP's networking strategy, in, in, in particular how it relates to, to, to Helion and your cloud strategy. What if you sure. could talk about that a little bit more? Sure. So, uh, so HP networking uh, has you, you know we we're providing the underlying cloud networking infrastructure inside our HP Helion OpenStack distribution, 
And uh, that actually, that, that solution comprises you know, a lot of value add that, that we, we put in for, for HP customers, as well as a very, very large component of stuff that we just upstream into the community. So one of the projects that we took on in uh, the last year or so was really fortifying, scaling, and hardening that Neutron core. So Neutron is the networking subsystem in, inside of, uh, of OpenStack, and uh, you know, it, had, uh, it wasn't necessarily scaling or performing to the level we needed. Uh, so you know, we let loose a small army of folks. We're now the number one committer on that project. And uh, the result is for the community as a whole, right? Anyone now consuming OpenStack now gets that, that scalable, performant, hardened version of OpenStack networking. So uh, on the cloud side, we have, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, what we call our, our virtual cloud networking solution, VCN, which is essentially uh, OpenStack, curated OpenStack bits. We also have, uh, you know, two other solutions, and you know, each solution uh, caters to a, to a slightly different market. We have our distributed cloud networking solution, targeted mostly at uh, sort of uh, service provider and, and large environments, which uses BGP and MPLS uh, for, uh, uh, for, for for federation. And then we have a partnership with uh, VMware, where customers who choose to use a, a VMware NSX solution are able to federate with our physical fabric controller and they get unified physical virtual uh, visibility and management. It's such an interesting dynamic, right? Because, I mean, you're talking about Neutron, it's essentially a software-defined networking for OpenStack, yep. which is what NSX is for VMware. Yep. And then you, in the same sentence, you're talking about the partnership with, with VMware. So you've got this interesting competing, cooperating, partnering, <laughs> and, and I wonder if you could talk about that a yeah. little bit. Well, we, we serve a lot of different markets, right? Uh, we're, we're the largest uh, IT vendor in the world, the right. second largest networking uh, vendor. And so, you know, we have our mix of customers who, you know, want a service provider scale solution that uh, uses technology and protocols that they're comfortable with. And then you have a set of uh, uh, customers, you know, especially in the enterprise, who are heavily invested in a VMware virtual infrastructure. So for them, it absolutely makes sense, right? The, 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 the next part in their evolution uh, towards you know, automation and SDN is to use their platform. So you know, we're there to support them. And uh, you know, where there are gaps between some of those native solutions, uh, you know, we partner, we federate, uh, and uh, provide you know, an end-to-end -end solution. So openness is a strategy, and it's a profitable strategy, right, for you guys? So you guys have shown that, uh, I mean, years ago, decade ago, plus, HP basically made the decision to go open and, yeah. and stop fighting head-to-head -head in, in all the operating system wars, and, and you've proven that you can make money at that. So yeah. I'll give you the last word. Um, thoughts on the future of the networking business, uh, the impact of Software Defined, and HP's role? So, you know, Software Defined isn't a point product isn't a family of products. Um, you know, you see, uh, you see some of our competitors rolling out a whole new line of switch infrastructure with controllers and a new API and a policy language and calling it SDN. And that always leaves me kind of scratching my head because that's not the point. The SDN point, washing. Yeah, the point. The, the point of SDN is is really to be able to offer customers openness at every layer in the stack, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's the infrastructure, the controller, or the app layer. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, that uh, open and, and openness in general is a is a is a very very strong movement in the networking industry. Um, you know, we are taking a very leading position here. Uh, so our, our leadership in OpenStack, well known, right? We have uh, nine project leads, including including the lead for the networking project, who is who is now at HP Networking. Uh, we are founding members of Open Daylight and a platinum member there as well. Uh, and more re most recently, we are plat we are platinum founding members of OPNFV, which is the open platform for network function virtualization. Uh, again, all very very important strategic areas for us and uh, you know, we hope to do very well there. So I want to add to your earlier definition. You talked earlier about open ecosystems, open standards, and, and, and open, source. open support. And, and you added to that just now, mm -hmm. infrastructure, the controller, and the application layer also have to have open entries, exits, mm -hmm. potentially even open source components, I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah, and you know, we, uh, 
you know, open source, like I said, it gives it gives all vendors great great leverage, right? Uh, and uh, provides customers, you know, the flexibility and the, and the openness uh, that that they they require. Excellent. All right, Sarah, thanks very much for coming to the cube and uh, sharing your open vision. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is the cube. We're live from HP Discover in Barcelona. We'll be right back.